Nicht Brian Jeshoud. Und dann ist der Klanzi, Goal ist der Klanzi, Goal ist der. Das ist Hammer, die Checken, der Black Clear. Cool und doch ein Gefahr, auch der Art. Ah, da hinter cool, kommt eine kühle Bar, da wachen wir hier. Hast du hier Rich Sean O'Donnell in der Höhe, 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 Machen Sie uns an Herzen cool, das ist ein cool Fighter. Ein cool Fighter in Sandung Eilif. Da ist Matthew Clancy ist da oben. Und dann hat er die Heine gestecht, wenn wir Sachen gehören. Wie eine von meinen Fakken und Lennon sind. Soll er erklären, dass er die Clancy Heine gestecht hat. Und da ist er wohl in Tschechien geslacht. Ja, wenn ich schon gesagt habe, dann habe ich gesagt, dass er die Heine gestecht hat. Und dann hat er die Heine gestecht. Und dann hat er die Heine gestecht. Ich denke, Matthew war ein fantastischer Teamplayer. Above anything else, uh, he lived and died for the team. Up and down the wing there, as a wing forward or corner forward as a roving mid, uh, third midfielder, just fantastic. Every game he played, he gave 110 uh, percent. I don't think that, uh, somebody told me before they said about a player. I think he had a, a real Rolls Royce engine, and that's what Matthew had—a Rolls Royce engine and a phenomenal man to pick up breaks. I've never seen. He's kind of telepathic uh, the way he could sense where the midfielder break was going to come and pick up that. But if I was to, apart from that goal against Jerry, which uh, thanks a million, Matthew, you gave us great times with that. But no, just for his uh, 10 or 11 years with Galway, I think he started 2001, all the way up to. 2012 uh, when he retired from Galway just a fantastic team player always put the uh, jersey before himself and a uh, totally unselfish player and a fantastic uh, fantastic footballer general all-round footballer it was probably why in the latter end of his career he picked up so many injuries because of the way he put his body on the line day in day out yeah. i think Matthew must weigh in about 12 12 and a half stone but uh, he packed a lot more than that yeah he was fearless in the tackle and uh, he wasn't a hugely uh, physically big man but as tough as nails and And could run all day. I think that's yeah, definitely. I think injuries definitely had to catch up with a player like that. It was okay for us sluggish lads in the backs there, kind of taking a nice and a more pedestrian pace. Matthew was 110 miles an hour man for the full 70 minutes, and that does take its toll over time. Uh, there definitely, though, I know he could, one good thing about his retirement now from the county, he'd be able to concentrate in the club with Uctorard. Now it's three or four definitely good years in him for Uctorard. So Matt, they'll need you for another three years up there. Clan and I think are coming back a bit, so you'll need to be there for the tussles with Clan in the next few years. And here's Joe Bergen. Sending it out decently there to Declan Meehan. Savage. Galway with the last attack. And that's a beauty. And it's over the bar from Matthew Clancy. It's Galway surely now. Oh yeah, as you said, Alex, it's hard to believe it's 10 years, but he was and he certainly brought tremendous qualities to it. He was a great leader for us. And looking back, it's hard to say like, that he had his under-21 medal and his senior medal at that stage in his pocket and he came in. But his attitude and and um, determination with us, he never displayed any of that type of arrogance around that, he was just a really, really solid guy. The thing about Sigerson football, it is the toughest of the tough in terms of football and it's no place for the faint-hearted. Sure, he had a team that had some exceptional players like Colin McFadden and Michael Meehan, but I suspect it was probably the grafters that got you over the line in the end. Well, I think that's what Sigerson is. You know, there was a young man from Meath as well called John Dunn who played centre-back for us and got a few runs from Meath, but certainly I think going back to Matty, he played centre-forward for us, played a huge, huge role and I think particularly in the final against uh, UCD, He had an absolutely inspirational display in that his work rate and tireless running on and off the ball was just a huge, huge plus for us in the day. As a coach, you've got to deal with a number of different types of personalities in a dressing room and out on the training field. What was Matthew like to deal with? Well, as I said, when you think of it, that he already had his Ireland medals in his pocket, you know, it, he was such a team player. There was never any issue with Matty. It was even trying to combine inter-county training with ourselves at the time. He was always upfront and honest with everybody and gave of his best at all times. So I never had any difficulty with Matty. He, he was very much a darling of the Galway football public as well because they saw him uh, you know, laying his heart, laying his body on the line time and time again. Some would say in an amateur sport he was very much a professional. Very much so and I think uh, you, you can nearly sum it up in that if you, when Matty was playing all you needed to tell him was where the game was on and what time because you didn't need to be worried about his attitude because he always seemed to want to play. And I think the thing that stands out most in my mind about him was that he really seemed to enjoy playing, which is probably why almost every single day that he went out, he, he usually performed really well. 
Sean Marty Locker trying to force him wide. He skips past that challenge. Into the clear comes Clancy. And he's got the goal! Matthew Clancy! Four minutes are left. And they lead for the second time in this match. Give a great pass in to Clancy coming through. And young Clancy, the son of Kevin, drove it to the roof of the head. Wonderful score. Very wisely puts it over the bar. Our goal way on their way. If I was to pick out one of the young fellas that kind of kept it going for a, goal, for a decade after winning the first Star Island, Matthew would have been one of them. And when I hear think of Matthew Clancy, and if you ever mention him, Matthew to anybody, they will always think of the goal against Derry. We were beaten, don't forget. We were five points down, things not going well. Then we began to come back and time was running out and that was a very good Derry team and of course it was an excellent Galway team at the time but uh, Matthew got this goal, a golden goal and uh, with about I'd say three minutes to go and I remember we were in the dugout nearest the canal end or the railway end rather, Hill 16 end and um, I thought the stand would come down over, over us. I never ever ever heard anything like it. And it happened out of the blue. I think it was it was Derek Savage got a ball out in the corner, won it well, put it right across the goal to Matthew. And Matthew always gave me the impression that he had wore a big a fairly big boot. And I could see this boot flying and up into the corner. I mean it was one of the great it was one of the great times in that decade. Probably one of the greatest thrills I ever got in Gower football and it was eighteen years chairman. But that was that was my greatest memory to this day of Matthew Clancy. And I mean his contribution at underage and down along the line one not I think it was two two thousand and two under John O'Manny as well. Matthew was on that team. And uh, he did have problems with injuries all right, like that mightn't have helped him a bit in his career. But he was a marvellous young fella and a credit to the club and a credit to his family and yeah. I was all the ball sneaks through to Matthew Clancy. He's facing Quinton Rooney. Scores on the stroke of half time. We're into injury time in the opening half. Beautiful ball sent through. Mayo didn't control it. It skidded off the surface. Came to Clancy. He faced Finton Ruddy. Look at the way he tucked it away. Beautiful. Yeah, wonderful goal, but a mistake by Aidan Higgins. Misread the ball, but you must credit Matt, Matthew Clancy keeping his composure and just slipping it beautifully underneath the goalkeeper. Great score for Galway. Comes point. back outside. Fires Matthew Clancy. Chance of another score. Hits this, and it's gone over the bar. Well, there's some drama down at Finton Ruddy's goal bus. Matthew Clancy has picked up an injury following that point. He's now scored a goal and a point in this Connacht kind of final. But if you want excitement, let's just look at this sequence of action. Michael Meehan having a shot here, brilliantly saved by Ruddy. He had to go down in it. He did so well. Then Mayo seemed to lose possession off the post. Back out for as Matthew Clancy. He steadied himself, looked and shot over the bar. Yeah, John Mohan will be raging about that because they had a good opportunity to clear the, their lines after the initial save by Ruddy. And again, not doing that resulted in the point that could be crucial at the end. Matthew Clancy won a Sigerson Cup medal this season with uh, NUIG, as it's now called, University College Galway in the old days. He scored three points against Leitrim. Loading one in for the goal scorer, Matthew Clancy. Hitting this from a very difficult angle. Matthew Clancy has scored a goal and two points in this Connacht final. The goal, the essential difference between the teams. It was the cushion that John O'Mahony needed coming up to half time. And Burden kicks in the ball. Aidan Higgins should cut it out. Matthew Clancy inside. Of course, it looks easy now, but he slips the ball home. It was it's a real finish. classy finish from a, you know, a real good forward. But the ball should have been cut out. And again, Clancy has the pace, keeps the head. Oftentimes you see fellas taking it too close to the goalkeeper and getting blocked. He slid mm. it home. And right. after that, I think, you couldn't see Mayo winning the game. It was always the one that was pencilled in because he was able to do a certain job for us. 
And like, if I was to talk about his sort of qualities, I'd have to say that, first of all, his speed. He had great pace. And coupled with that then, I'd say anticipation. Uh, he was able to watch where that breaking ball was and he'd, he'd win so many. And the third thing was his courage. You know, he won more ball for those, breaking ball, than any other player on the team in the two years that I was with the team. And then, of course, his skill. Like, he was able to carry that ball. He had the ability to get the vital scores as well, you know, so that he had an awful lot going that other players didn't have. And it was this quality uh, of leadership uh, that, that I'd have to say was the finest thing about Mighty. Would we have won any of the two All-Irelands unless he had got that goal against Derry, you know? And, uh, you know, so that, that uh, he, he had longevity. He, he had so many things going for him, you know? And, and it's an awful pity that, that he sort of retired that bit early. Like, I think that he shouldn't have. He, he went too soon, I think, even, even though he was, had so many years playing with the county and everything, but he still had a lot to give, I felt. And I suppose at club level, while we're concentrating very much on his contribution to the Maroon and White and to the county cause, you could just imagine how important he's been to Gerard. Ah, sure. Invaluable. You know, when you have, have some of that quality, when you have a county player that has been through it all, and he still was a great club man, you know, that he was out there, he was a leader. And, and that, you know, when you look at things and when you look at, at uh, going to club games, and you've gone to a lot of them as well, Ali, but when you go to club games and you wonder, where are the county players in it? You know, oftentimes you, you would look, but when Uchtar was playing, you definitely knew where the county player was. Borry Joyce, it's only shooting practice at this stage. He has kicked 10 points in this All-Ireland football final, it is all over. And Galway are the Bank of Ireland All-Ireland football champions for 2001. There was one team really up for it today, and they were the men from the West, the first ever side to be beaten in a provincial championship match to go on and lift the Sam Maguire Cup. But there was no doubt about this. The Sam Maguire Cup is going to go away. It's the county's ninth All-Ireland title. So we've heard all about 2001, that goal against Derry, the under-21 success a year later, the Sigerson victory, and a career of over a decade that you, Matthew, have put in in the Maroon and White in Galway. I know secretly all of those Uchtarad lads there tonight are hoping that you stay on for another couple of years with the club to lead them back to senior level. But Matthew, congratulations on a tremendous career in the senior jersey of Galway. Well done on everything you've achieved, and let's hope there's another chapter to be written in the career of Matthew Clancy in the green and white hoops of Uchtarad. Enjoy the night, Matty. Talk to you soon. Give a great pass in to Clancy coming through. And young Clancy, the son of Kevin, drove it to the roof of it. Wonderful score.